France is a large and mysterious country and has been home to mysterious people since the Stone Age. It's been the venue for some of the world's most horrific battles and conflicts since the Middle Ages. You better believe a lot of fortifications have been left over. From cities that were left in complete ruins but kept around for historical reasons, to missile silos that were built to fire a missile at the US. Here are abandoned places in France. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm your host American Eye, bringing to you another possibly haunted or creepy video. But first, quick shout out goes to this person with a Russian name for leaving us this comment on our recent zombie video. Thanks for sharing your advice, we think laser guns would work great, but make sure you have a good supply of batteries. Stay tuned for today's question for your chance to get featured. Number 12. The Karnak Stones the stones here found near the village of Karnak, located in Brittany, date back to 4500 BC and is even referred to as France's Stonehenge. This is just an estimate and it's quite difficult to know their true origins. There's 3000 total standing stones and might even look like some type of graveyard from an aerial vantage point. It's believed that these were constructed from pre-Celtic people living in modern day France. Legends about the site say that the wizard Merlin turned Roman soldiers in the stone that were marching towards their settlement. It's hard to say exactly what these were used for. Some believe that they had some type of astrological significance, while others believe that they were used for structures storing sheep. Number 11. The Maginot Line The Maginot Line appears to be one of the greatest military failures in all of history, and did little, if anything, to stop the Germans during their blitzkrieg. Bunkers and fortified installations were created by the French in the 1930s, which would hopefully prevent an invasion from the east. Their goal was to at least slow down the Germans to the point where they could send reinforcements and give them a run for their money. This was constructed near the border with Belgium and along the eastern border of Alsace and Lorraine. It was named after the French minister André Maginot. The vast fortification was well built, but due to the long border, it was tough to protect the entire area. Most of the focus was on the border with Germany, which included many covered artillery positions, revolving turrets, small arms firing holes, and redoubts to keep Alsace secure. Eventually, in 1940, over a million Germans poured through the supposedly impenetrable Ardennes forest. They then used a decoy army to distract the French further south. Bomber planes devastated French military installments, and with virtually no air force, the French were forced to surrender. The Maginot Line is still around today, but much of it has fallen into urban decay. Number 10. Miropolis this theme park celebrated French literature and culture and is located in the city of Kodimanch. After encountering quite a few problems from the get-go, it closed down in 1991. They probably didn't construct this place realizing how horrifically creepy it would be once it gets totally abandoned. It was almost like the French version of Disneyland, but only with French characters. Possibly one of the creepiest parts here was the Dame Tartine that you see here in this photo. Some creepy things, also known as the Dragon of Sortilege that we saw earlier in Spree Park, came from this spooky place. Eventually, this dream park turned into a nightmare and couldn't turn a profit. It disappointed quite a few foreign investors, but in any case, it's been used as a training location for the GIGN or French Special Forces. Plans to turn the area into an eco-refuge might bring some people to the area, but not as many as they originally thought. Number 9. Village Abandonné de Perios This ancient community in France, located near the Pyrenees Mountains, was home to Jean I of Aragon during the 13th century and currently sports a population of zero. While people might actually come here to visit what's left over, no one's actually living here since 1968. During the mid-1950s, it sported a population of 100, and that number gradually decreased until no one was left. In more recent times, the French people tend to be flocking to big cities and are abandoning smaller villages for bigger opportunities. Number 8. Corbefi, France An entire French resort village was abandoned due to economic hardship in 2012. Corbefi is located in the Limousin region of France, toward the middle of the country. The village was complete with stables, swimming pools, and tennis courts to attract tourists. The town was mostly made up of family houses and a town hall. It sits near a 13th century castle, which adds historical interest to the area. When it went abandoned, the only tourists that it attracted were thieves and squatters who needed a place for shelter. The entire building was auctioned off to an American Korean photographer for about a half a million euros. Not too bad of a price, considering that this man owns a village now for about the price of a two-story house. The photo still remains as an eerie reminder about this abandoned resort. On Google Maps, it appears as though not much is going on either. Number 7. Teviak Island 
Situated in northwestern France in the region of Brittany is one of the most important archaeological sites in the world due to its history during the Mesolithic period. The island of Teviec looks beautiful from the outside, but it's home to some pretty creepy discoveries from the past. Some of the discoveries on this island date back to 6,700 years ago. The most noble discovery here is of a couple of women who were victims of homicide and buried under a shelter of deer antlers. Their bodies were found covered in jewelry made from seashells. What's also interesting during this period of time was that it was actually possible for people from France to walk across the English Channel. People here during this time often collected food from animals such as shellfish, squid, fish, birds, etc., which was found near the grave. The woman shows evidence of blunt force trauma to the head and one had a flint arrowhead between her eyes. It appears to be neither a hunting accident nor an act of ancient warfare. There's still much debate as to whether or not it was a sacrifice or some other reason. History isn't always pretty, folks, but important nonetheless. Number 6. The Verdun Forest Located in the country of France, there's a Zone Rouge that no one is allowed to build anything on, especially farms or houses. It's land that's been declared as completely devastated, human life is impossible, and 100% impossible to clean. The Battle of Verdun in France was one of the longest and biggest battles during World War I, and this area is still closed off due to arsenic poisoning and undetonated explosives. These photos are showing you a place that used to be considered no man's land, and you can still see how the battle has shaped this land. Forests here seem quite bizarre as well. It's rumored to be littered with thousands of skeletons, trenches are still noticeable, barbed wire is on the ground, and artillery shells are turned into rust. Much of the forest was simply destroyed from artillery shells and poisonous chemical weapons filled the air during this battle. This photo here displays an entrance to the Fort Mar, which is completely inaccessible due to the extreme shelling it received, which could make it collapse at any moment. Only enter if you dare. Number 5. The Atlantic Wall It became rather clear that Germany would be invaded by the Allies from the north in the 1940s. In an effort to halt their efforts, a massive construction project would take place, complete with towers, artillery, radar systems, and of course, a vast tunnel system with room for thousands of people. This would be known as the Atlantic Wall, and it proved to be ineffective. The walls and ceilings of these bunkers were made from concrete and ranged from 2 to 5 meters thick. Beachhead artillery ensured destruction of ships across the horizon, and the beaches were littered with landmines. Many tunnels were constructed in an effort to turn the whole island into a massive fortress, making up part of the Atlantic Wall. Number 4. Orador sur Glan Orador sur Glan was a small French city near Limoges that was destroyed completely during World War II. During the D-Day invasion of Normandy, an armored panzer division was ordered to head north to stop the Allied assault. A group of French resistance was stationed at this city and tried their best to intercept the counterattack. They put up a good fight, but it clearly wasn't good enough. The Germans also believed that one of their commanders was being held hostage in this town, and in exchange for 30 civilians of the town being held hostage, they wanted their commander back. But something didn't go quite right during this negotiation, and it turns out that the entire city was razed. The French thought about rebuilding the city, but Charles de Gaulle didn't want to. He preferred the ruins of the town to be left the way it was to show how brutal the Germans were on that day. Number 3. The A. Perlac Bunker This bunker, located in the northernmost region of France, occupied an extremely important strategic area not too far away from the English Channel. This bunker would have made it easy for the Germans to launch V-2 rockets into London and took up enough space to fit 100 missiles. No other country besides Germany had the capability in creating the devastating V-2 rockets at this time, which would be precisely targeted at London and other places. In 1943, the fortress was approved and construction began quickly after. Laborers got to work and used steel reinforced concrete to make a ceiling 16 feet thick and outer walls 11 feet thick in order to withstand heavy bombing raids. One of the reasons why they went through extensive measures to fortify this bunker was because a lot of rocket fuel was being kept inside. They didn't want the entire place to just explode. The super bunker, however, would never get the chance to be fully operational and it was captured by Allied forces in 1944. It's currently a museum and open to the public. Number 2. La Coupole La Coupole roughly translates into the dome in French. Another construction project that was sniffed out by the Allies, La Coupole, was another launch base for the Germans that would have targeted London and other places. The main thing that makes this spot different from the last place we mentioned is the fact that there's a giant dome that would have been mistaken for some kind of indoor sports stadium. The grandiose facility was constructed to hold on to a V-2 rocket, rocket fuel, and warheads, and would have launched them as well. An underground railway tunnel was built, which would have made it easier to transport rocket supplies. It had big expectations and was meant to be the launching site for an intercontinental ballistic missile that they were testing, which could have reached New York City. 
before we get to our number one, let us know which place in France you'd like to visit the most and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, Chateau de Val. Located on a peninsula of an artificial lake in the country of France is found in a remote town of Auvergne where no one would even find you. The area surrounding the castle is heavily fortified and there's an artificial lake right next to it which should provide you with plenty of fresh water. Built in the 13th century, it appears to be in great shape and would prove to be a formidable hideout during the zombie apocalypse. So which one did you think was the scariest? Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video.